I served time in federal prison, which turned out to be the best thing for me. I got clean. I rediscovered my passion. Then my dad broke you out. Exactly. To kill you. Exactly. But just as his men were tying me up for my execution, I launched into a performance of my Macbeth. Whence is that knocking? Wait, Duncan, with thy knocking. I wish thou couldst. They couldn't get enough of it. I've been doing weekly gigs for the lads ever since. So you're like his jester? I can give you a quick preview if you like. Nuncle, nuncle, nuncle. Uh, thank you, Trevor. I think we're okay. Right now, we really just need to find a way to. What the what hell? The fuck the fr oh, oh! What, what is, is that? What is that? Oh, who? What's what? That! That! What that, is that? that! What is that? You can see Morris. Morris? Oh, 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 Morris! They can see you. You're real. All this time, I thought I was hallucinating him. Oh, this is such fab news. Where's his face? Oh. <laughs> He's a bit sensitive about that. Welcome back, everyone. This is my new Marvel Shang-Chi video for the alternate ending and some deleted scenes. The director came out and explained a couple versions of the ending that they played with before we got to the theatrical version, so we'll break it down. We also got that brand new Trevor scene, so I'll talk about him, too. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Now that the movie's been out for a while, we're going to start seeing some more Eternals trailer videos too, because that's coming out in November. And I should say, careful for spoilers for the ending of the movie if you have not seen it yet. But since they released the film, the directors come out and said that they had multiple different endings to the movie in different versions of the post credit scene with different Avengers characters showing up in a different setting. So during the actual ending of the movie, Wen Wu, the real MCU Mandarin, even though as he explained, that was never really his name winds up having a full-on Star Wars Return of the Jedi Darth Vader arc. He and Shang-Chi fight until he's able to show him the true power of the Ten Rings, wielding the same type of dragon energy that his mother did at the beginning of the film, and like Luke Skywalker, is finally able to convince his father that he's wrong. His mother, Wen Wu's wife, has not been speaking to him through the Ten Rings. It's been the Dweller in Darkness, one of the cosmic Marvel fear lords from another dimension inside the MCU, who's been gaslighting him this whole time. Although there's a really interesting theory about what's going on with the capital cities of heaven and the Iron Fist mythology that I'll probably do in a separate video, but it's not really relevant for deleted scenes or the actual ending of the film. So Wen Wu, like Darth Vader, sacrifices himself to save Shang-Chi, but in doing so, passes him the Ten Rings, like passes them to him formally, like here, these belong to you now, they're your responsibility, then promptly gets his soul sucked out by the Dweller in Darkness, killing him. And if it wasn't clear, they show you his dead body hit the ground, so he's meant to be dead. Shang-Chi uses the Great Protector Dragon's energy and the Ten Rings to go full Goku, Dragon Ball, Super Saiyan, killing the Dweller in Darkness. So this is where the director says they had this alternate ending. Originally, he said that they made a huge change to the plot. So in the alternate ending, originally they were going to have Wen Wu, his father, survive the final battle, and he wasn't going to be killed by the Dweller in Darkness. But they had still planned on having the post credit scene be his sister Sha Ling taking over the Ten Rings organization and making all the changes that we saw in the final version of the movie. The most notable one being that she allows women to become soldiers and assassins like the Ten Rings version of Black Widows. And the stinger message at the end was always going to be the Ten Rings will return. As in come back in another MCU project movie Disney Plus series before Shang-Chi 2, the sequel movie. So in the alternate ending where Wen Wu was going to live, he would have just left the Ten Rings to Sha Ling, stopped being the Mandarin again, even though technically he wasn't the Mandarin to begin with. But it would have been similar to what he did earlier in the film when he married Shang-Chi's mother and started his family, because he still would have passed the Ten Rings of Power to Shang-Chi. So then he would have faded into the background metaphorically, not wanting to be evil anymore, wanting to atone for some of his actions, and started being a better father. That was the whole message during their big final fight, is like, your family needs you, stop being so crazy. So he was always going to pass leadership of the Ten Ring to Sha Ling, but in the version where he lived, it would have just happened in a much more formal way. But the end result is the same, mostly. The director said the reason why they decided to kill him off, even though Tony Lung was amazing in the film, is because they said they were going for the most impactful moment. And him dying wound up being a more impactful conclusion to his arc. Like Star Wars Return of the Jedi style, Darth Vader dies to save his children. Although because we have the What If series, like What If Wen Wu had lived, if you're a big fan of Star Wars Elseworlds stories, there was a comic book a long time ago where they basically did What If Darth Vader had lived after Return of the Jedi and then started helping the Rebellion dismantle the Empire. He starts wearing this white version of his Sith armor. It's just a funny What If version of a Star Wars story. 
But Kevin Beige said the reason why they use the 10 rings will return message as the stinger at the end instead of having it say Shang-Chi will return because a lot of times like after the first Captain America movie it says Captain America will return because the Avengers movie was happening next. Kevin Feige said at this point there have been so many Marvel films and because of what they did with the mid credit scene they said that they felt like the audience would automatically assume Shang-Chi would be back for more movies so they didn't need to tell them in a stinger message at the end like oh we always assumed he would come back. The whole mid credit scene was meant to tease the Shang-Chi sequels in Avengers 5 with the details about the Ten Rings being more ancient than the records of Kamar Taj that Doctor Strange and Wong have, they're from another dimension and they were broadcasting a signal to whoever created the Ten Rings. In the way they played it it was meant to be more ominous like it wasn't a good character like some great powerful ancient cosmic villain. I've already talked about who I think that is in some of my other post credit scene videos so I'll link those at the end of this and down in the description. But pretty much everybody assumes Shang-Chi is coming back so Kevin Feige said they just wanted to do something unexpected with that stinger because more casual fans would have probably assumed that the Ten Rings organization would be gone after Wu died. Big twist though his sister takes over Sharon Carter power broker style. That's kind of the vibe they're going for like his sister Sha Ling isn't evil Sharon Carter is not evil now even though she's the power broker they're meant to be morally gray characters sort of playing between the lines like Julia Louis Dreyfus's Val character. The director also clarified that there were other versions of the mid credit scene too that they worked on but ultimately it was Kevin Feige and the other Marvel producers in the powers that be who chose which characters were in the mid credit scene and what they were doing in the mid credit scene all that dialogue like everything about this and how it went down was dictated by Kevin Feige with some input from the director. The only thing the director said that he wanted in this scene here was that he wanted them to include Brie Larson's Captain Marvel because he'd worked with her on a separate movie in the past and they were friends. So he just wanted to work with her again that was his only note but everything else came from Kevin Feige but that's why they did the scene with the Avengers zoom call because it was the easy way to explain how she could be there when currently in present day heading into Captain Marvel 2 she's still over in the Kree scroll part of the galaxy. The whole reason for the Hulk being there was to tease what's going on with him during She-Hulk and the reason why they have him looking like Banner again like he's turned back into Banner from Professor Hulk. And obviously all the details about the Ten Rings were meant to tease Shang-Chi 2 Avengers 5 and the larger stuff that they'll continue to set up in the sequels. But the whole thing with the Trevor scene just to move on to that with his backstory after Iron Man 3 as he explains he went to Seagate prison where they were keeping Justin Hammer maybe he'll come back for Armor Wars. It seems like everybody's coming back from the Marvel Phase 1 and Phase 2 movies but when Wu's men broke him out of prison during the events of the Marvel one shot all hail the king during this scene here. Then as he explains they took him back to Wen Wu's compound after this and they were about to execute him for creating all this negative attention around Wen Wu and the Ten Rings but he started to act so ridiculous as they were about to kill him that they started laughing and decided to keep him around as their court jester just doing performances for all of Wen Wu's men at the compound. The whole thing with Morris that he was the magical creature from Ta Lo was captured by Wen Wu later in the timeline after he'd captured Trevor. They said that he was picked up during one of Wen Wu's many attempts to find alternate ways into Ta Lo the alternate dimension through the forest. And if it wasn't clear Ta Lo is not meant to be on planet earth it's in a different dimension completely. Morris just happened to be in the forest Wen Wu's men found him there. The reason why he was able to navigate the maze so easily though is because as he says he's super old he grew up with Shang-Chi's mother even though you can't tell from looking at him and he'd lived in that area for so long playing in the forest for so long learning how it worked his whole life so navigating it for him became second nature. It's the same thing with Shang-Chi's mother she could have navigated the forest maze with her eyes closed. And even though at the end of the movie they don't completely show you what happens to Trevor and Morris it's implied that Morris stayed in Ta Lo with the others of his kind and Trevor went back to Earth in the main MCU dimension and they just let him go free. I'm not expecting Ben Kingsley to come back in the sequels but I suppose there's always a chance for more small cameo scenes but I kind of feel like they completely paid off his character's arc during the movie like the whole point of putting him in it was to explain what happened after this scene and they did that pretty completely. But if we learn about any other big alternate endings or major deleted scenes I'll include them in my future videos usually we don't find out about all of them until the Blu-ray and home video releases which will actually be in the next couple of months so you won't have to wait that long if you've had problems seeing the movie in theaters. Like I said Eternals is going to be the next big movie coming out in November that's going to be a theatrical release they're not making any big changes to that. Spider-Man No Way Home coming out in December no major changes to that either and the actual good news is that Venom Let There Be Carnage got moved up it's coming out at the beginning of October. I've got a couple new trailer videos for that that I'll post in the next couple of days too so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of that. My full Marvel What If Episode 6 video will post next Wednesday just like normal. 
Everyone click here for my full Shang-Chi post credit scene video and click here for my Shang-Chi abomination video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.